Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel and to this video that I wasn't expecting to film today but here we are. I am doing a, what am I calling these? A review roundups? I basically have like one, two, I have a bunch of things. In the title you can see how many things I'm reviewing. But these are just a bunch of things that I have formed some opinions on. And I thought maybe you wanted to know whether or not I feel like these are worth it. <laughs> it's gonna be skincare, it's gonna be makeup, it's gonna be foundation, concealer, some highlighters. Some of these some of these are newer items, some of these are not older items, but not like fresh off the boat. It's gonna be a mix, that's what I'm trying to say. Should we start with the skincare and just work our way to to the rest? Uh, let's start with the skincare. Okay, I have two skincare things I wanna mention. Oh really, this is just skincare series. This is from Good Molecules. This is the skincare brand that is very affordable, that is sold at Beautylish. I'm pretty sure that this is an in-house brand, like this is Beautylish's own brand. I got sent four pieces in PR by Beautylish and I was super grateful for that. I didn't... Hmm, <laughs> If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that my skincare routine is basically thanks for trying. I always forget, but I did decide when I got these because she sent me these products plus a toner that I'm not including here because I haven't really been using it, so I don't really want to be included. But I was like, I'm going to use this every night for like, has it been like a month or three weeks? Three or four weeks, and I'm gonna use it every night because I can't do skincare in the morning. It's too early. I go up at five. It's not happening. And I'm gonna see if I actually see like how I feel if I see some results. I am. Um, I'm gonna get a bit closer. I did film this look, but I filmed it for Instagram. I am 35. Ah, uh, and I have lip gloss here. I'm 35. I have some fine lines uh, around like here, and I am like a normal skin type. I do not have oily skin, I do not have dry skin. Sometimes it feels a bit tight and sometimes it gets a bit oily if it's like super moist outside or super warm or if it's super dry and super cold. But all in all, I have a very normal skin. And even if I don't do skincare, my skin feels okay. But I will say after, what is it now, three weeks of using this every night, my skin feels a bit more fresh, a bit more plump, a bit more rehydrated, a bit more smooth. I will say, I use all of these three things in nighttime together with another thing that I'm gonna show you. This is the Super Peptide Serum. I start with this one on clean skin, and then I mix a bit of this uh, Hyaluronic Acid Serum together with a night mask. Is it called? Night mask? Stop it. No noises. Uh, sleeping mask and I mix a couple of drops with this with my sleeping mask and then I go over it with an oil. This is the... Oh! Stop it! Ultra Hydrating Facial Oil. And my skin feels great. I have a cat hair in my lip gloss and my computer is making noises. I need an intervention. And I will say, do I see any miracles on my skin? No. Did I expect a miracle? Do I need a miracle on my skin? Not really. My skin is pretty okay for where I'm at in my life and for the amount of skincare I don't do with my skin. And I, I like all of these. I didn't have any kind of reaction. I didn't uh, get oily skin or anything like that. I didn't get red skin. So it felt really nice. And every morning when I woke up and I just cleaned my skin, I did really feel like, wow, this feels really nice on the skin. So I will say that these were really nice and they're super affordable. And that is the reason why I wanted to try them. So I like them. I really did like them. And if maybe if you're in the same position as me and want to try some skincare, this is an affordable option. The sleeping mask that I've been using lately, and I've been using quite a lot. I don't know if you can see, but it's almost down to half. I don't do use that much, um, mainly because I, I don't really have dry skin. But this is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. I got this when I was in LA as a gift from my friend Jen Gerard from Gerard Cosmetics. So grateful because this has been working so good for me. It smells so sweet and amazing. It smells like candy and this is more of a gel-like mask so if you have very dry skin and you need something that's like almost fatty on your skin this isn't going to be it but if you like something and the same with this one this it doesn't really go into your skin it still feels like an oil in your skin but it's not like a super sticky hard like really oily oil on your skin and this isn't very like fatty on your skin either so if you have more of a 
I wouldn't say if you're not dry, this could be perfect for you. I don't know how this will work on dry skin because it does sink in a bit into the skin and it doesn't feel very fatty on the skin. But for me, this works wonders, especially with these other products. But this also works nice without these products. Sometimes when I just feel like my skin needs something extra. I have been sleeping with this one. I have to say like sleeping masks for skincare. That is my favorite because it's like fuss free. Like I just put it on and go to bed and that's it. I need that in my life. That's what I that's what I need. Next I'm gonna talk about something and I think that this is like a primer, but I don't really use it as a primer. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Hollywood Flawless Filter Superstar Youth Glow. I think that this could be used as a primer under foundation. Of course, not under a full coverage foundation because that will cover it up. But if you're using like a medium or light coverage, this will look great under that. I have tried it like that, but I use this on its own. It has a doe foot applicator. I think I have mine in medium, light medium, number three. It has a doe foot applicator and this you just like draw it on your skin as uh, and then buff it in with like a sponge that's what i do or you can buff it in with a dual fiber brush this is the one i used the other day because i use this on its own i know people also use this as a light dewy highlighter thing the thing that's good with this one is that it makes your skin look extremely dewy and fresh and healthy and it gives an ultra ultra light coverage like not even light coverage we're talking like just a little bit of tint, but it makes your skin look so glowy and dewy, but it dries down so it doesn't feel sticky or dewy. And that's what I like with this one. It doesn't really hold up in a very hot weather. I did try this in LA and I didn't like it as much in LA as I like it in Sweden. This doesn't hold up on me if it's like too warm. If I start sweating, this is not going to look as nice but other than that the longevity is pretty okay and i feel the same about a foundation that i'm going to talk about and this is a foundation that i'm wearing right now this is the nyx born glow i love how i'm talking about something super expensive and then i'm like nyx <laughs> this is the foundation that i'm wearing today uh, and i'm of course have some highlighter over but you can see that it's a bit glowy all around it's a beautiful foundation but the longevity on this one on me isn't the best and that tells me that if you have an oily skin this probably won't last that long on you because this looks great on me for like six hours but then around like the five six seven hour break like point depending on what kind of weather i have it starts to break up on me and not like it starts to fade it starts to break up and that is a bit annoying because it looks so good until then and uh, it does work a bit better if i use some kind of a uh, primer under but I don't really like using primers under my foundations I like them to work without a primer as well but if you use a mattifying primer or a longevity kind of a primer it will last a bit longer but if you don't and you're like me and you just put your foundations on without a primer I would say five six seven hours that's how long it lasts on me before it starts to break up uh, I I did set this with powder as well once and it didn't like it didn't stop it from breaking up. It looks great on my skin. It looks great because it looks dewy, but it's still touchable. So it's not like sticky and that's, I can't do sticky. I can't do dewy foundations that like are dewy. They, they can look a bit fresh. They can look a bit dewy. That's perfect. But if they're like still tacky or didn't set on my skin, I can't, I can't do that. So for that reason, I really like it. This could be the perfect like half a day foundation. This is the perfect half a day foundation. But this isn't the foundation that I would be able to wear to work and look fresh until I come home because I wouldn't unless I really really prep and like babysit it and I don't want to do that but I do like it and it is affordable and it has a really nice price point and actually a really nice uh, shade range. It's not, it's just not my perfect foundation. If I were to like grade it I would say like it's a B plus. It's good, but it's definitely not the best one I have. Now let's talk about a concealer. This is the new concealer by Benefit. This is the Boing Cakeless Concealer. So cute. It looks like a pen with a little rubber. Uh, and it is a doe foot one. And the doe foot has a bit of a dip in it, so it gets more product. 
I love this one. This is my new favorite concealer. This is the one I'm wearing today. This is the one I've been wearing every day since I got it, I think. I did use the Juvia's Place one, this concealer once for a video, but other than that, this is the one I've been reaching for. I have mine in number three. It doesn't have that many shades, but the spread amongst the shades are pretty good. I would say that this is a almost full coverage concealer that is very thin and it's very blendable on my skin and it looks really great. It also is semi self setting, meaning that if you just leave it on, if you put it on your skin and then you blend it in and then you just leave it for like three, four minutes and then blend out the creases, if you just do that and give the concealer a moment to be able to set itself before you go in with powders, you can use less powders and get less like crepey skin on your eyes and I feel that that is perfect for someone my age like I said before in my 30s I don't want to accentuate like the fine lines that I have under my eyes so I want to use as little powder as possible under my eyes so for me a concealer like this is perfect I have really been enjoying this I think this is a great concealer this is I would say this is not as full coverage as the sh uh, shape tape but it's thinner and more blendable and on me this looks even better. I did like the shape tape but it wasn't my favorite concealer but I really do like this. Right now this is my go-to. I have been really really enjoying it. The other thing that I have from Benefit, should I take it now? <laughs> this is the new brow styler. It has a pen up here. You can see I've really been using this because you can see it's down here. It's the one I have in my brows today. Uh, I have mine in number three. It is a pen here and I use this pen to draw the underline, um, like the shape of my brows. And then at the other tip, the ball is to remind you to shake it because there is a brow powder here. And oops, I really love using a brow powder on my brows, but this one has a really fine tip. Do you see how detailed this tip is? And I feel like with all of the brow products that I have tried that have been like brow powders in like a format like this with an applicator, all of the applicators have been too big and not precise enough. I need something that is precise so that it can actually replace like using a pencil, like using a brush Again, brush, the word brush is pencil in Swedish, so I mix them up. But it needs to be like replacing the how precise I can be with a brush and a pressed shadow. And this does allow me to be that precise while still giving me the not super, super, super defined result that a powder actually gives. I will say though that this one here, I can draw in straws in the beginning with this one, but I still prefer using the uh, matte shade shade tint this one the one that's called shape uh, shape why is there hairs everywhere shape and shade it is a brush tip applicator with just a like a liquid like a sharpie but with a brush tip and that one is amazing because it is semi opaque and you can really draw in like hairs with it and I feel like I could do that and I did bring this one traveling so in a pinch I could use the, just this one and a brow gel and I'm fine but my preferred method is to use this one and together with that uh, brush brush thingy and then the gel and that's how I create the brows I have on because I am wearing this one today I like it I really do like it I also totally get why people wouldn't want to spend a fortune like because this is like $30 I think on a brow product. I totally get it but if you do like the benefit brow product and if you don't mind spending more money on a brow product I think this is a really nice thing and if you also like brow powders like me and you like having it all in one product I'm just saying it's not a bad product. It's actually a really nice product and I have been uh, using it and enjoying it. Now let me see what I have left. I have some cheek products I have a lot of cheek products. It's all that's left is cheek products. <laughs> and I have a couple, okay? The first thing I want to review for you is the uh, shade sticks, blush sticks, light sticks. <laughs> the ones from Colourpop. I did get sent these as PR and I have to say these aren't my favorite. I did also buy a couple myself before I got sent them as PR. Oh, here it is. I felt this hair. And I just, this one is in... This one is in, 
Oh, here it is. Under pressure. And these are nice. They're nice, but I'm not reaching for these over... I just feel like these are not creamy enough, and I feel like this is going to be perfect if you are the kind of person that uses blush and like maybe bronzer and highlighter but don't use a foundation if you're that person you're probably gonna like both of these because i feel like they disrupt my foundation they're not creamy enough and even if i use them on my hand and then go in they're not creamy enough so it doesn't pick up enough i feel on the brush and that could also be me liking a lot of blush so for me these are the longevity is just fine so i feel like this just isn't for me I like more blush and I like to be having foundation on and I also like that when it's in a stick form like this I need to be able to either go in directly on the brush or go in directly on the skin and I feel like it's just an extra step so these are not for me but this one is okay the light sticks this is the same thing I can't go in directly on the skin they're not smooth enough for that they're gonna disrupt my foundation but this one I can at least go in with directly on my highlighter brush this is probably the only reason that I can do that is because my highlighter brush the one I use is pretty stiff I use more of a like a more dense highlighter brush and that's why I can go in with the highlighter formula directly on my highlighter brush. So this one I like, this one I use, the blushes, they're just not, they're just not for me. I thought I'd throw in the NYX Sweet Cheeks formula as well. I did get sent this uh, by NYX together with the foundations that I just talked about. Uh, they sent me the Sweet Cheeks Glow formula in Summer Breeze. This is a powder blush in a beautiful like apricot -y, orange -y shimmer. This is stunning. If you wanted to jump on the glowy blush train or trend and you don't want to spend a fortune on another formula, I'm going to show you in a bit, I highly recommend this one. The packaging is super slim and nice. It has a nice like click closure. You can see the color uh, with the see-through lid. I prefer a cardboard packaging but this is at least very slim and nice they have a bunch of colors and they also have the same colors in the matte formula i did get sent one of the matte blushes as well but i have only used this one and i've used this one quite a few times because i do love a glowy cheek but if you're balling on the budget and you want to try the glowy blush trend these ones are really nice. Now let's talk about the one that's not as affordable, and that is the Melt one. I did buy two of these Melt. I think these are highlighters? Yeah, highlighters. But I use this one, Genesis, as a blush. Uh, this, is, this is that goldy peach. I have been using this a lot lately. The formula is impeccable impeccable i also bought it in morning star which is a highlighter on me this is an icy peach and this is just a bit too like icy for my liking you can see here it is an icy peach i thought it was going to be more peach but it's actually uh, more icy than i thought it was going to be but it's so smooth and nice and you can make it to be just a glow, which is what I really like with this Genesis. This could be just a really nice glowy blush, but it can also be a very blinding highlight. Really like this formula. Having tried this formula, even though it cost me an arm and a leg and the blood of a virgin, this formula is great. It is great. And if you want to splurge and you want to get something nice, and you were eyeing this, I will say it is beautiful. It is a magnetic closure. It has a mirror if that is important to you. It's not really important to me. Uh, the formula is beautiful. So smooth, so nice. I really do enjoy it. And having tried this, uh, even though it's so expensive, that is making me feel like I could try more colors in this formula because I really do enjoy it. I really do enjoy it. I have two more things that I want to talk about and I've been talking for 20 minutes. Why does this keep happening to me? Okay, let's talk about the Nabla highlighters. I have one of them here. That, this is the one I'm wearing today. This is Privilege. This is a warm goldy peach. This is my favorite. I have been using Adults Only and Truth because this comes in six colors. I will try and put up a picture. So that you can see the other colors. I do have them here as well, but this is one I'm using today, the privileged one. This is my favorite. This is the one I use as a, a highlighter. The Ozone one is a bit too icy and too light for me. It is a bit like Morning Star, I'll be honest, but this one is maybe a bit more peach. But Ozone and Morning Star, they're pretty the same, like icy peach kind of a deal. 
The formula is great. The adults only and the truth one are the ones I've been using as blushes. They are absolutely stunning as blushes. Ooh, beautiful as blushes. This highlighter, as you can see, it's not like blinding. It's definitely not a blinding highlighter. It is more that glow from within, making you look fresh and healthy. And if you use some setting spray over this, let me just put some so we can, uh, so I can show you. Uh, and if you use some setting spray and then use a bit more highlighter, you can really build this up. If you want it to have more of a um, blinding result. But I like when it's more of a your skin is glowing. I like that because I feel like it, not, not that it looks like natural. And I don't think that anyone is looking on my skin and being like, oh, you look like you don't have makeup on. I don't think that that is the deal and that's not also the result I'm going for. I'm obviously not trying to be like a no makeup makeup look. It's not what I'm going for, okay? I know. <laughs> but I'm just saying that this gives a very healthy, not like an Instagram stripey blinding, like ET phone home glow, unless you really build it up like I did now, you can really get a nice glow. I just feel like this is very smooth and healthy looking in a very flattering way. The formula is beautiful, the packaging is beautiful, and these have no glitters. And I know that that is a big deal for some people. I don't mind the glittery formula, but this one is not a glittery formula. So if you are not about the glitter life, these might be for you. Last one. Last one are, oh, oh my God, let me. Last one are the highlighters from Kaleidos. I do have a video up on my channel where I face swatch all of these. And I will try and link that down below to my Instagram so that you can check it out. But basically these uh, were sent to me a week and a half ago maybe. And I have been using them quite a bit and I have face swatched all of them. Some of them I've used like outside of the face swatching video and some of them like this blue I've only worn once on my cheeks and that was in the face swatching video if you watch the video you will see that all of these shades work as highlighters some are just a bit more wacky than others even the green one even the green one works on my skin as a highlighter because these are not a hundred percent opaque formula which None of these other highlighters that I talked about today are either and a highlighter shouldn't be because then it will mask your skin and it will not look glowy and healthy and natural. It would look just like you have eyeshadow on your cheek and that's not what you're going for. That's not what I'm going for. Maybe you are going for that and that is totally fine but if you are going for that, this isn't it. Uh, this though, I mean a green highlight, it's never going to look natural at all. I feel like there are separate formulas within this formula. These two, the Laser Glazer, which is the green one and then the Skywalker, the one, the blue one that I showed you, these are a bit more of a flakier formula. If you spray your face with some setting spray and then go in with these, they will be 100% smooth. No like chunkiness on your skin. It's gonna look so great. These will also look perfect as eyeshadows. And then we have the Solar Sailor. This is very, very, very duochrome -y. This is a typical like bright yellowy gold duochrome. And the uh, Comet Catcher, same here. Very smooth, very duochrome -y. This is that violet, fuchsia pink duochrome. This is not as strong of a duochrome than this one. This is a bit more, I don't want to say subtle because the sheen isn't subtle, but it's not like blinding. This is a bit more opaque. Uh, and then we have these two. They're a bit more of the classic frosty, frosty highlighter formula. This is like a warmer peach with a bit of a frost sheen. And this number two is like a pinky peachy uh, frost. These are the least wacky colors. These doesn't really, nobody's gonna look at these on your skin and be like, oh, you have one of those duochrome highlighters on you. I have seen some swatch pictures of these and I feel like they are a bit, I don't want to say manipulated, but they are basically taken in very specific lighting conditions that you most probably will not have while wearing these. I am telling you that when you're wearing these, 
they don't come off as really like duochrome or weird colors. It's just a apricot-y highlighter and a pinky, frosty pinky highlighter. They're very pretty and they're very wearable in the sense of being, you know, wearable. Uh, so they're not like wacky in any ways. Whereas if you were more into the wacky highlighters or more like color duochrome highlighters, these are definitely it. All of these will work as eyeshadows. I have used the pinky one as an inner corner highlight in a tutorial that's also should be live on my Instagram. And also I've used the green just to try it on my eyes as an eyeshadow and it's a beautiful topper shade. I like these, I think they're really nice. The packaging is beautiful. It is a soft touch tin packaging where all of them are unique and all the pans are pressed uniquely as well. I really like these and I really love the Kaleidos brand and everything that they stand for. I feel like they are really embracing the whole theme of the brand and I'm not saying that they always have to go with this space thing. Maybe they will branch into other things. But I also feel like there is nothing about Kaleidos makeup that says like they always have to do space things. I just feel like when they do space themed things, they really go for it. Packaging, names, formulas, all of it, it just feels very well thought through. And I have to say in this day and age when a lot of makeup is being thrown at us from left, right and center, it's very unusual for things to feel 100% well thought through and I do feel like the things that Kaleidos are releasing is one of them. I did get these as PR. None of these things are like sponsored in any way, shape or form. Um, I did receive also the benefit things as PR and the good molecule things and the NYX and the Nabla. I did buy the Charlotte Tilbury and I did buy the Melt, and I did buy some of the Colourpop sticks, uh, and I got some as PR as well, I just don't know which ones I bought and which ones I got in PR. Um, and I think that is everything. Oh yeah, and the Glow Recipe was a gift from a friend. But yeah, I hope you like this uh, little review roundup, uh, some like rapid fire <laughs> reviews. I'm just trying to give you some thoughts on things that I have tried. I do a lot of dedicated reviews on like eyeshadow palettes and stuff like that. I also did a review like a ranking kind of a deal with some palettes uh, lately. I'll try and remember to leave my playlist with my reviews up here if you want to see more reviews from me. I do sometimes call myself a review based channel on YouTube even though I do a lot of other things as well but that is how I started out on YouTube because I want to do reviews and I want to let you know about things so that if something is really good I can let you know if some things are really similar I can let you know and also if some things are just not that good I'll also let you know but that was everything for this video if you want to be subscribed please do I'd love to have you and I will see you in my next video bye